The complex behind me hosts Rwanda's first public coding school. It is providing young students with training in software development, embedded systems, and cybersecurity. In this episode of Doing Business in Rwanda, we are going to delve into Rwanda's efforts to reduce outsourcing of software experts and ultimately become a knowledge-based economy. The school is located in the northwest district of Nyabiho and has been operational since a few months ago. Its establishment was informed by the growing demand for software skills, which officials say can better be acquired at a young age. As a country, we were lacking our own uh, homegrown uh, young trained people who are highly qualified in uh, IT uh, technologies and was handicapping us in the things that the uh, government wants to reach. This is really getting kids at a young age and exposing them to the highest quality of, um, uh, of uh, computer systems and uh, programming. For those kind of students that, have, that are very passionate about coding, that are born to code, if once they're done with their, with their senior three living exams, and for them they already know that my career path is in coding, I want to code, we're offering them a platform, like a bridge program, where they go through a three-year program, uh, A-level program that is very strictly customized to uh, coding. And what it helps is that the kind of students that will come out of it either are ready to get onto the market and be employed or to create their own businesses, or if they choose to continue with a bachelor's degree, with a very, you know, or an undergraduate degree, they can still transition to that. Selection of students is very rigorous and top of criteria for one to be admitted here is to have excelled in physics, mathematics, and of course English, which is the language of instruction. The government has also established partnerships with other institutions to ensure the students are equipped with the best possible skills and are market ready. We are selecting the top best students in the country and again to have best teachers. The teacher we have, they are coming from industry and they are coming actually to teach what they used to do. They are teaching what they, not only what they know, but only their experience. And we are hoping at the end we will have a good result. With having good students and good teachers, then the result will be perfect. Basically, this is an intensive program, so what they're supposed to cover for five years, I think they are covering them in three years. So you need someone who is really talented, who is very skilled and who is very bright, so that he can grasp all information in small glimpses of time and be able to catch up. We give them the basics of programming, we teach them the latest technologies that are used in different sectors, and beyond <coughs> that, we equip them with the latest uh, facilities facilities like DevOps, CI, CD, so that when you leave the, the school, you go there and then you compete with others, you will be able to code, you will be able to introduce uh, best practices of a programmer, and you will be able to use latest technologies to deliver your work. We are partnering with uh, institutions like Carnegie Mellon University, and uh, we shall be working with uh, universities, renowned universities from across the world who will be giving us uh, people to come in and go just in terms of uh, staff exchange. So these kids are going to be exposed to the best of the best, not just in Rwanda but at world level. These are among the 60 young students who were selected in the first cohort of the Rwanda Coding Academy. They are being groomed to become software experts, a big number of whom the country has to import. We really have to depend in most cases on uh, uh, bringing in uh, expertise, highly qualified people who uh, we have to pay uh, yeah, yeah, at a premium in high, in, uh, in, uh, they, they, are, they are very expensive, they are costly, and uh, it's not wise for a country to be dependent 
uh, on, on borrowed. Not only are skilled software experts scarce, those that are in the market are not up to the standards. You find jobs are many, but programmers are not many, and those who are there, they are not well equipped, so they are not up to the tasks that are given to them. You hire someone, he comes, and then you have to take time to train him so that he can deliver up to the standards of the industries. According to students at the Coding Academy, software skills are important and we help them solve problems not only for Rwanda, but also globally. With friendly learning conditions and good teaching, they hope to realize their dreams. Programming teaches you how to think, yes, how to think deep and also helps you to innovate and solve global problems. You can solve any problem in the society with programming. I was interested in studying coding because, uh, as you see, we are in a world which is being developed by technology. I will get to learn more and will be able to help my country to improve in its technology. We have good studying conditions. The school is located in a good region where there is a good climate and favorable climate for studying. And also, we have good teachers. They are really experienced professionals and skilled. They, are, they give us important lessons. They are good at teaching, so I think that will help me realize my dream. While the school currently provides training in software development, cybersecurity, and embedded systems, plans are to introduce more courses. This is just a start. The, our plans are bigger, and uh, we want to incorporate many more uh, programs in ICT systems to cover all different fields that go together with uh, cutting-edge technology which Rwanda is aspiring to. Rwanda Coding Academy comes at an opportune time when Rwanda wants to become an ICT hub and knowledge-based economy. It is one among many that the government wants to set up across the country. This is really the first of probably several other uh, academies that will uh, that uh, the government is setting up uh, so aspiring to be an ICT uh, hub uh, again th there has to be that sense of seriousness and uh, purpose so we can't do it half half uh, we are investing heavily we understand that for us to be able uh, to build capabilities in country, both for the population but also for the industry, we need to grow our digital literacy levels beyond what they are today. And so there's a number of interventions that we have that are part of the strategy, that are part of the work that we are doing, but they're also embedded in some of the initiatives and the investments that we attract into the country to say how are some of these initiatives coming in to really bridge these digital literacy levels that we see that are really, really low, especially when you look at um, uh, the rural communities. The idea of an ICT hub beyond uh, having uh, houses here and there is really having the right skill set that can power uh, the companies that would uh, want to set up here, the startups that would want to build their products from here. One of the things that these students will have to deal with upon completion of their studies is cybersecurity threats. 2018 statistics from PwC revealed that cybercrime is the most common form of economic crime in Rwanda. That may not sound worrisome, but the same report indicates that 15% of Rwandan organizations believe cybercrime will be the most disruptive economic crime in the next two years. Internet of Things is going to penetrate literally every industry, and uh, digital is penetrating almost every industry. In the words of um, one of the great innovators, uh, uh, entrepreneurs who say software is eating the world. So if software is eating the world, that means um, protecting that world is a new opportunity. And so uh, from the technology sector, we look at that as a new opportunity, an opportunity to create security mechanisms, uh, cyber security mechanisms. And the school is ensuring uh, the Coding Academy is ensuring that the students, uh, the graduates, have the right uh, foundations. ICT and software development to be specific 
is according to experts an emerging and futuristic area that is worthy of investment and that everyone should be keen to get involved in. Our Rwanda Coding Academy is a great initiative to start with. Previously, we have seen government uh, invest in traditional education systems, but uh, this time around, it is pioneering a new mode of education um, that is future-centric, uh, or rather future-proof. As we all, or most of our viewers or your viewers uh, would agree, uh, programming or coding is becoming uh, a requirement for literally every skill set and every field. This is a great initiative locally for the local industry. Uh, it uh, enhances the talent pool that is needed uh, for growing a digital economy. There is this um, growing trend of more and more companies uh, being open, willing and uh, getting a competitive advantage to employ software engineers that are placed anywhere or that are live anywhere in the world. So when you have more and more Rwandan becoming or being equipped to become software engineers, you are not just equipping them for the local market, you are equipping them for any uh, global skills market. Um, but uh, secondly, what we know also is uh, software engineers contribute to building solutions to uh, some of the problem we face uh, because technology has proven over and over again that it can uh, uh, bring about a change that improves people's life. Uh, so the more you have qualified software engineers the more and who live in Rwanda, the more you are increasing the chances of having uh, companies born out of Rwanda building solutions for Rwandans but also for our region directly. So for sure uh, there is a huge need for software engineers. Now many believe an initiative like this reflects Rwanda's unwavering drive to promote ICT, a sector that is critical to turning the country into a knowledge-based economy. That's why we leave it in today's episode of Doing Business in Rwanda. If you have any feedback, you can email us at dbirra at abn360.com or on Twitter at dbirwanda. My name is Stephen Mouvouni. Thanks for watching.